Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am so grateful that you are here. My name is Nikki and I channel messages from film and TV shows using tarot and oracle cards. And I'm excited and honored to be doing a reading for you today. For today's video, I will be channeling messages from episodes from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And I'm so excited because this is one of my favorite shows that I would watch growing up. And there's a lot of wisdom in this show. And there's a lot of messages about family and connection and, you know, learning to do the right thing, learning valuable lessons. A lot of very profound input came to me as I was watching these episodes. And I'm excited to be doing this video for you today. So how the reading will work. In the next part of the video, you will see four different piles. Please meditate on the pile that is speaking to you and go to the timestamps that I provide down below directly for your reference. Also, this is a very general video. A lot of general messages will come through the readings. So if you find that a message does not resonate with you, don't try to force something that does not fit. Only take what resonates and leave what does not. So let's jump into some readings from some episodes of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Hey, pile number one, welcome to your reading. Your episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is actually from season six, episode 12, and it's called Boxing Helena. So let's see what your cards have to say and how that relates to this episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. First we have coming through is this card called Soulmates. And at the top is the number 33. And with the number 33, that angel number is very indicative of knowing within yourself that anything is possible. And with the Soulmates vibe coming from this card here, Spirit is showing me that a lot of you are wanting to manifest a soulmate into your life right now. Or if you are in an existing relationship, some of you are having doubts about whether the person you're with is actually your soulmate. And what I'm seeing specifically from the episode Boxing Helena from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is in the very beginning of the episode, Will takes his young cousin to this gym to receive boxing lessons, right? And while he's there, he meets a woman who he is very attracted to and very beautiful. And he meets her while he sits down at this machine that is, you know, used to work your arms. And... As she's sitting down, she's kind of toweling herself off, but she's about ready to start working out on the machine. And as soon as he sees her, he pretends like he's already done almost 100 reps, and he's like, 9 to 8, 9 to 9, 100. And she can already tell from his energy that he's not being authentic, but it's a very comical scene in the episode. But what Spirit is bringing through that scene and this card of soulmates is that if you've been wanting to manifest a soulmate, the best thing that you can do is be authentic to yourself. Because when we are authentic with who we are, we naturally attract people who pick up on that authentic vibe that we will authentically vibe with. So in this episode when, you know, Will was kind of being over the top and he wasn't being authentic to himself, she picked up on that. She actually gets up and she walks away. 
another message that this card is bringing through is one of, you know, where before the, the energy of being in an existing relationship and having doubts about whether the person you're with is, in fact, a soulmate, Spirit is saying the same message goes for you in this circumstance. If you are doubting whether or not the person you are with is your soulmate, it's important to be authentic to yourself. And if your partner is really the one for you, they will accept and embrace that authenticity that you are putting down in the relationship, that energy you're putting out. And as you continue to be authentic with yourself, that means, you know, not compromising on the things that bring you joy, that you're passionate about. A true soulmate will always accept you for who you are in these circumstances. And as you are authentic to yourself, bringing that vibe into the relationship, as time goes on, it will become more clear to you whether or not the relationship is a good fit for that authenticity that you were bringing through, all right? And also, I'm for those of you who want to manifest a soulmate, being authentic, being who you are, this is what will attract a soulmate in, in the right timing, but also I'm picking up on meeting soulmates in unexpected places. So in this episode of Boxing Helena, Will actually meets this woman at the gym. So perhaps you may meet a soulmate at the gym. Maybe your soulmate will be standing behind you when you are getting a cup of coffee or at a restaurant. It's about being in the right place at the right time but also just exuding that amazing, authentic vibe that is who you are, pile number one. That is what will bring in the soulmate that you are looking for. With the next card here, this is yin and yang, and the number at the top is 36. And 36 angel number means to find balance within. And that is also what this card is all about, yin and yang. But also if you look closely at the card, the hand at the top is very feminine and the the hand on the bottom is very masculine. So this is also about balancing masculine and feminine energy within yourself. Because when we have both of those energies balanced within the core of who we are, It helps us manifest in a very powerful way. And in the episode of Boxing Helena, this episode brings through the different dynamics of masculine and feminine energy. It brings very good examples of what that looks like. Because when Will meets Helena, she picks up on the fact that he is hitting on her, but she's not really into him in that way, he's actually repelling her energy. And it's because there is an imbalance between the masculine and feminine energies between them. And when that is not in balance within us, we will find our relationships to be very challenging. If there is too much yin, that means that the feminine energy is more dominant. And if there is too much yang, that means the masculine energy is more dominant. And then if that's the case, if we have too much masculine energy, our partners can feel like they are being suppressed or controlled. If there is too much yin energy, like this could be an example of, you know, a man living in a house with a woman who who loves to make everything pretty, but he doesn't feel like he has a space where he can, you know, be himself, which, you know, usually that's indicative of having a man cave. That's just an example that's coming through right now. But there needs to be a balance of both yin and yang in order for relationships to really thrive 
in a healthy, balanced way. And what happens in this episode, Will finds out that his cousin Nikki is actually being trained in boxing by Helena. And when he finds out that she is the one teaching him, he is a little misogynistic at first. And he basically says, you're the one teaching him to box? And he basically projects this this energy at her that has her exert her her power towards him. And she's like, oh, do you want to, you know, go around, want to go head to head with me in the boxing ring here? And he was just like joking and kind of like brushing her off until she punches him in the gut and he like falls to the floor. (laughs) So she basically exerted in that moment how strong she was. And Will undermined her in that way. He wasn't believing that she was capable of punching him in the way that she did because he was in this thought process that women are viewed in a certain way. But she proved him wrong by showing him how strong she is. So starting off here, they have this 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 dynamic of challenge challenges coming up in their relationship already because of the differences between masculine and feminine energy and will not believing that she was as strong as she was and she proves him wrong which is really cool in this episode and what happens as the episode goes on is that will starts to become afraid of women in the episode and he starts to have these dreams that all these women are beating him up and he actually wakes up on the couch screaming and he doesn't he wants to avoid Helena at all costs even though he's still very attracted to her but what happens in the episode is because she knocked him out she kind of starts to pick on him and and poke at his masculinity in a, in a sense, you know. And she will just randomly punch him in the face. And he starts to get a little tired of this. And it comes to the point where he actually blocks all of her punches. And he has to exert, you know, his masculine energy because it wasn't okay that she was she kind of turned into a little bit of a bully here. But this is where, like, the episode gets a little far-fetched because after she keeps punching him in the face, he blocks all of her punches and turns and, like, spins her around and holds onto her arms because he knew that if he resorted to hitting her, that he could have really hurt her and he didn't want to do that so he had to show her that he wasn't messing around that that he appreciated her strength but that he wasn't going to allow her to bully him to put him down And this is, like I said, this is where the episode gets a little far-fetched in the sense of she's like, oh my gosh, take me. And he picks her up and they, like, go off into this other room. Now, I don't really see something like that happening in real life. I mean, it was a sitcom. It's supposed to be funny. But also at the same time, it just goes to show that in a balanced, healthy relationship where the yin and the yang is balanced in a healthy way, both partners are being courteous to one another, not bullying one another, not provoking or hitting one another. And that should never take place in a relationship. A relationship is one that fills you up, is balanced, makes you feel good about yourself, not one where you're constantly on edge all the time, wondering if your partner is going to hit you, put you down, 
belittle you. So I am picking up on some karmic energies in that sense. Um, but Spirit is saying that with this card, balancing masculine and feminine energy from within will help to bring more balance to whatever situation you may find yourself in right now, pile number one. With the Queen of Wands, oh my gosh, and I'm so excited that I finally get to use this deck. This is a movie tarot deck that my sister got me for Christmas, and I love it. So the Queen of Wands on this card is represented by Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. So she's totally given me Helena vibes from this episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The Queen of Wands knows her worth. She is self-assured and she, she sits on her throne. And this is also a woman or man. Like the cards are not gender specific, but the Queen knows her worth and knows how to speak her truth. And with Helena coming through this episode, I feel that she's the one that's represented by the Queen of Wands here. So I'm also picking up of a lot of people on this reading who are activists for women's rights, who speak up for women, who love to empower women, who love to encourage women. And I'm also like hearing Soul Tribe too. I feel like a lot of you are part of a very dynamic group of women who uplift and encourage each other, who celebrate each other's successes, who are just honored to be in such an empowering group of, of women. And I love that so much. And Helena, she definitely does stand her ground with Will in the episode when he calls her out by saying, you know, it's it's Muhammad Ali. It's not Muhammad Ali Shidi. This is where she's like, oh, so do you want to go head to head with me in this ring? And when they finally do do that, and she shows that she is not afraid to stand up to a man, which is very courageous and bold and we'll learn some very valuable lessons from that in this episode so I'm picking up on a lot of very confident feminine energy in this reading um divine feminine energy that has healed bringing into balance the masculine and the feminine within oneself. That is a message that's coming through. And Helena from Fresh Prince of Bel Air is what is being represented. So very cool. And for those of you who are activists for women's rights, definitely keep going with that because it's definitely taking you to some very cool places and opening up a lot of really cool opportunities. So yeah, this is the Queen of Wands sitting on her throne, and that re represents all of you who are in this amazing energy right now. With the Wheel of Fortune, this is a cycle that is coming to an end, and at the top of the card is the letter X, which is the Roman numeral for the number 10, and 10 represents completion as well. And this Wheel of Fortune card from the movie Tarot is from Back to the Future, and it has Christopher Lloyd. It's a famous scene at the end with the clock tower where he, you know, ends that cycle of them being stuck in time. So this cycle that is breaking is, I feel a lot of you are coming into shadow aspects about yourself, toxic patterns, negative patterns, and looking upon those with love, but also knowing the importance of the authenticity and confidence that you bring to every single situation, knowing that your shadow has actually served you in strengthening you 
and also helping you, you move forward on your journey in a very powerful way. It has really opened a lot of different perspectives up to you, I can see. And I also see a lot of you are here to also help others break patterns within their own lives, helping to uplift people, helping people even to balance masculine and feminine energy within themselves, to help people be confident, to teach people that we all have our own throne and it's important to take our rightful place on it because there is no ranking in this universe. We all have our place here. There is no person on this planet that is any better than any other. We are all at just different places on our journey and it's important to embrace where we are right now because this present moment is perfect. But yeah, I'm feeling a lot of energy of breaking cycles, of coming into more balance, of not compromising who you are, embracing that confidence and really raising your vibration and helping the collective in a very powerful way because the healing that you do on yourself benefits us all, pile number one. And I'm also feeling with... Christopher Lloyd on this card, for some of my masculine energies who have been in a relationship with a very powerful woman where the there was an imbalance in the yin and the yang, also taking your power back, not allowing yourself to be bullied because that's what happened in this episode. Even though Will did not believe in Helena at first, she took an opportunity to bully him in a sense, and it was not cool that she kept punching him in the face, right? So if you have had a partner who has done this to you, I see a lot of you breaking that cycle and exerting your truth, saying, I am not okay with this. Because in all relationships, it is not okay to bully our partners. And that goes for all genders or however anyone identifies. It is not okay to bully whoever we're in a relationship with. So I also feel a lot of energy from masculines who have been in relationships with feminines who did not treat them the best as well. But putting your foot down and saying, I am not okay with being your punching bag. I am not okay with how you've been treating me and I do not deserve this. And that's also, you know, speaking your authentic truth. And if your partner truly loves you, they will understand that. And how they respond to you standing up to that behavior will be very eye-opening as to whether or not that person is meant to continue to stay in your life. Now, if they listen to you, they hear you out, and they understand then it could be a relationship, you know, that requires patience and continuing to fight for that love, to fight for the relationship. But as you speak your truth, what happens after that it will be the key to what decision you make next because we all have free will and we have to gauge all of our relationships and situations in our life accordingly. But I do see a very powerful karmic cycle breaking by someone exerting their truth here. Next card we have is the Ten of Wands in reverse. So there's another part of this episode where Ashley, 
who is also Will's cousin, she gets a job at this fast food place called the Dippity Doo Dog. And she has to wear this quirky little outfit that she doesn't want to wear. But as soon as she gets there, she becomes completely overwhelmed by everything she has to learn. So I'm also feeling an energy for some of you of being very overwhelmed by a situation. Perhaps you've just started a new job and it's like, you know, a fish out of water, having to learn everything just like Ashley does in this episode. And not really knowing what to do in this moment. Because in the episode, her boss, he tells her how to do everything, but he wants it done in a specific way. And when he's actually like churning the lemonade that they serve at this restaurant, he's like, churn, baby, churn, like he's singing this song. And when she goes to churn, he's like, sing. And she's like, I don't want to sing (laughs) and he goes that's what gets the momentum going that's what you've got to do here and so she's like uh okay and she's like churn baby churn (laughs) and the scene like cuts to the gym with Carlton and Will and that whole dynamic but then it goes back to this this scene where Ashley is working at the fast food restaurant and she It's a day where she's completely overwhelmed because it's so busy. And her boss, like, completely loses his his head here. And she has to bring him back down to earth. And she's like, rule number 38 from the handbook. Don't freak out. And he's like, oh, okay. And so Ashley comes in and she's like, okay, everyone who wants a drink, go over there. Everyone who wants a corn dog, come over here. And you work the lemonade. And she tells her boss to go do that. So she's like the voice of reason that comes in and helps to bring calmness in this very overwhelming situation. So spirit is showing me that you have this ability to bring calm into even the most overwhelming of situations. So if you find that you're in a stressful situation right now, pile number one, remember your strength of calmness. Remember your strength of bringing peace. Because all it takes is one person to do what Ashley did for things to balance out, to even out. And it's really, really beautiful, okay? So whatever you are learning right now, whatever is causing overwhelm, stress, remember your superpower of peace and calmness and come back to that place because in that place you will get the answers as to how best to navigate a very stressful situation. All right. Next, we have the devil here. So with this card, I'm being drawn to like the stairs going up into her head. And this is bringing me back to the scene where Will was having dreams about all these women beating him up. And it's actually very funny. Like, if you have not seen this episode, I highly recommend it. I laughed so hard watching this episode because in this dream sequence... He goes into this gym, right? At the same gym where Helena basically beat the the crap out of him. But after she did that, he starts to like fear women. And he goes back into this gym and he's sitting at this bike and this woman comes over. She's like, that's my bike. And he goes, oh, I didn't see your name on it. And then he just keeps going. And she gets very irritated in the dream and she picks him up and she like throws his entire body across the gym where he lands in front of this other woman who gets mad that she that he is in her space and she picks him up and throws him back to the other side of the gym. So what this energy is bringing through is, is a fear. I'm feeling for some... The, the, like, this message, I feel, is for some masculine energies. It does not have to be, but it's like an energy of believing certain things about the opposite sex that aren't true. And our beliefs create our reality, right? So if we have beliefs that all men are dogs, if we have beliefs that all women are controlling, 
that is what is going to perpetuate in our reality. But because we have this Wheel of Fortune card, which represents cycles coming into balance, I see that you're becoming very aware of what your thoughts are and what you want to experience in your reality, pile number one. This is you walking up these steps into the mind, not being afraid to look at these negative thought patterns and saying, you know what? No, I'm going to flip this. I'm going to choose to believe that I attract women into my life who are nurturing, supportive, loving, caring. I choose to believe that I attract men into my life who make me feel protected, who empower me for the person that I am. I believe that I do not attract misogynistic people. I believe that I attract healthy, harmonious connections in my life. And it's like being willing to look at the old beliefs and flipping them to new positive ones and taking one's power back in that way. This was also next to the Ten of Wands in reverse card, so perhaps the overwhelming energy was a thought process or beliefs that Spirit is trying to bring your attention to right now, pile number one. So I see you taking your power back here, especially with that super power you have of bringing calmness to any situation. So just being mindful of what we are putting into our minds is very important and flipping the beliefs to more empowering ones. And that also, it's underneath yin and yang here. So bringing the thought process into balance, focusing on what you do want, not on what you don't want. With creativity takes courage. Before this episode even started, Will is sitting at a table with his cousin Nikki, and Nikki is wanting to build these model airplanes. And Will's like, okay, I'll, I'll help you. And Nikki warns Will that the glue that they're going to use for these model airplanes is very sticky and to make sure not to get it on his hands. And he goes, oh, yeah, I got it. But then it like shifts to the next scene and Will has literally glued parts of the model airplane to his face and they're stuck all over his face. So... What I am seeing here is a lot of you have passions to move forward with something of a creative nature. And Spirit wants you to commend yourself for the times that you have been bold and have put yourself out there because creativity takes courage. Whereas Will sat down to do this model airplane with his little cousin Nikki, but at the same time it was something he had not done before. And he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't care that he could potentially make mistakes. And he ended up actually gluing parts of the model airplane all over his face. So if you're venturing into something new, also that, you know, overwhelming filming, something new, a new cycle, a new beginning taking place here, your confidence, your calmness is what is going to push you through. It takes courage to put yourself out there. So commend yourself for doing that, okay? And when you genuinely love what you are doing, that is what creates that positive energy that brings manifestations into existence. And I also see like you're getting a lot of you know, I'm drawn to the light bulb on the card here, having a lot of light bulb moments, having a lot of really cool ideas. Spirit wants you to write these down. And as you're navigating those new ideas, to give yourself grace if you make mistakes, it is okay to get something wrong. It is okay to make mistakes. Our mistakes and getting things wrong are what help us grow and learn, okay? So very cool 
to have this boldness to put yourself out there. And this card was underneath the Queen of Wands, which she exudes confidence, self-assured fitness, shining a light on all of those strengths about yourself, not caring if you're liked, not caring what other people think. And filling your way into those fears, if those are some that have been coming up. And commending yourself for filling the fear and doing it anyway. <laughs> With the last card, make each day your masterpiece. This is spirit bringing through a message of how your success lies in your daily routine. Okay? So in this episode, it's a lot of people going to the gym and taking care of their body. So this could be a message of spirit coming through of exercise being a great way to get your mind in a peaceful place, to release some stress if you have been feeling that overwhelming energy. Having that as part of your routine, going for a walk, but also the little things you do throughout your day if you're working on something creative implementing that, eating a good breakfast, having an affirmation routine where you are conditioning your mind for positive thinking, visualizing your day in the morning as to how you want it to go because it is up to you. You have control of that. Now, you, you obviously we can't control what happens in our day, but we can control ourselves and how we would like our day to go first thing in the morning and visualizing what that would look like, visualizing ourselves interacting with people, uplifting people, visualizing being productive, visualizing positive interactions with others. Spirit is saying the success of your day lies in your routine. So those consistent things you do when you first get up, they matter. And that is the key to making each day your masterpiece, owning your routine, owning your morning to elevate your day, visualizing how you want your day to go. And with this energy that's coming through this reading, you are very powerful, pile number one. Continue to believe in yourself. Continue to balance the energies within yourself Continue to break those cycles and continue to charge forward with that courageous energy that you're bringing to your creativity. Very beautiful. I love it. That is all that I am seeing, pile number one. Those are your messages from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air episode, Boxing Helena. If you enjoyed the reading, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here, and I will see you on the next video. Bye! Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Your episode from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air is episode four in season four called Father of the Year. So let's see what your cards have to say and what spirit is bringing through messages for you. So the first card we have is reparenting yourself with number 25 at the top. And that angel number means that you are capable of achieving great things, pile number two. And with reparenting yourself, spirit is showing me that in your past, there was some hurts and disappointments that stemmed in childhood. And what Spirit is saying is that when we can learn to reparent ourselves and give ourselves the love that we may not have received in childhood, it helps us to heal on a very powerful level. So what happens in this episode, Father of the Year, and I'm being drawn to Father, so... Whatever happened in your past, pile number two, it could have been, you know, feeling disappointed by a father figure, a father not being present, 
or even perhaps having been raised by a single father, being a single father, or being raised by a single parent in general is a lot of vibes that I'm getting because in this episode, A Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, what happens is in the very beginning, Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, they want one of the other children to watch their youngest baby, Nikki, so that they can go out and spend some time together. So they give the baby to Hillary and Hillary goes shopping and she comes to the conclusion that she just cannot enjoy her shopping experience while taking care of Nikki. So she drops Nikki off where Will is working, which is at a college university in the dining center. So she drops the baby off and Will is a little frustrated at first, but he notices that there is a single father who is dining in the center and he's getting a lot of female attention because of the baby. So Will takes it upon himself to lie and say that Nikki is his child. So this is where I'm feeling a lot of energy from single parenting or having been raised by a single parent or understanding the struggles of you know, being a parent in general or having to raise a child all by oneself. And what I'm feeling very strongly here, pile number two, is that you are someone who, despite the hurt and disappointment that you went through in childhood from uh, any hurts that a father figure or a mother figure may have projected onto you, this is something that you have decided within yourself that you are not going to do the same things, that you are going to be an example to your children that your mom, your dad, your caretaker was not able to do for you. And this is you breaking the cycle. So reparenting yourself is you looking at these very hard patterns and breaking them and say, no, I'm going to show my children that I am there for them no matter what, that you can do hard things in life, that it's okay to put oneself out there, but also that it's very important to give yourself the love that you may not have received in childhood. And I I see so much powerful energy of teaching children self-love, teaching them that so that it's okay to to be who they are that they are capable of doing hard things because you are being the example in that way and that is really really beautiful pile number 2 so spirit is saying to celebrate the strengths that you have that you are passing down to your own children or to the people around you the example that you are setting i'm also feeling a lot of energy of light workers on this pile teaching people how to reparent themselves to use those hardships from the past those hurts those disappointments as fuel to propel one even further on their journey and there's power in that recognize the power that you have don't doubt your ability to do this very powerful healing and don't doubt your ability for what you are teaching your young ones or if you're teaching, if you don't have children, what you're teaching the children in your, that are in your life. You are making a very profound difference, even if you don't feel that you are, okay? So with number 25 at the top here, remember that you are capable of achieving great things. And you're already in the process of doing it. With your next card here we have sexual freedom with angel number 30 at the top. And this angel number means to open your heart and to allow yourself to express your feelings in a natural way, what feels good for you. With the card being sexual freedom, I do feel that there are some couples or some married couples as well, whether you're in a relationship where you're married, where 
your intimate time together has kind of fallen by the wayside due to other duties and responsibilities, whether that's, you know, taking care of the kids, going to work, and then coming home to the point where you're so tired that you and your partner's needs physically aren't being met right now. Because what happens in this episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, after they find one of the children in the house to watch their youngest baby, Nikki, they make time for each other. They go out, they have a good time, and they have this time in this moment that is specifically for them. And they're getting all sexy, and Uncle Phil, he goes and he puts on some sexy music, and Aunt Viv goes and lays down on the bed, and she's got this really nice sexy lingerie outfit on, and after he comes back to the bed, he sees that she has fallen asleep. So this is what I'm picking up on with this card, is that your needs in a physical, intimate, sexual manner, they matter. And it's important to communicate this with your your partner. And it's important to make that time with each other. And, you know, in those moments, you know, where you, you come home and you fall asleep and it's like the next day, it's, you know, the routine is starting all over again. Spirit is saying when you do make time in your schedule for those moments, it draws you closer to your partner. It helps you expand and grow together. So Spirit is saying to do what you can to find those moments with your significant other because your needs matter. Both of your needs matter. And communicating that from a place where your heart is open and you're expressing how you feel. So I'm seeing a lot of this isn't being communicated to your partner, but I'm seeing that if you open up and let them know what's going on, you might find that they feel the exact same way and they want to have these moments with you. So set some time apart to speak to one another about this and communicate your needs because this is an important part of a relationship. No, it's not the end-all be-all, but it's expressing your love for one another, especially when you guys are so busy taking care of the kids, going to work, you know, paying bills. Like, all of that stuff is routine. So making sure that you have time and moments of love with your partner it really does matter, okay? So that's the message that's coming through that card. With King of Wands, this is a very passionate person who knows how to shine light in the darkest of corners, is not afraid to confront things that do not feel right to them. And who this is epitomizing from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I'm actually seeing Carlton's character. Because in this episode of Father of the Year, when Will starts lying about Nikki, his cousin, being his son, and that he is a single father, and it's you know tough for him to make ends meet, there is a lady who comes into the dining center. She's a photographer, and she takes Will's photo. But then the next day, Will sees that his photo is actually in the school newspaper and it's saying father of the year, just like the title of the episode. And it was all based on a lie. And Carlton gets very, very angry at this. And he does everything in his power to try to get Will to do the right thing. But Will is not having it, right? And it's very interesting that underneath this card is this card that says, when given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. So what happens in the episode, Carlton attempts to call his mom and dad to let them know what Will has been doing. And it doesn't work out. And that's because when there are situations like this, 
sometimes there is a valuable lesson that needs to be learned. Sometimes we have to hold space for other people to learn the lessons on their own and appreciate people for who they are. And Carlton was trying to control this situation because it was getting really out of hand. He was, he was you know, angry in his own right. He was trying to do the right thing. But sometimes the kindest thing that we can do is to step back and let other people learn the lessons they need to learn, even if we know that we're coming from a right place. Sometimes when we know that we are right, the kindest thing that we can do is to just let go and let things unfold as they are supposed to, okay? Now, it does depend on the situation here, so discern what that is in your current situation right now, pile number two. But also, with the King of Wands, this is a very passionate energy. This is moving ahead fearlessly with something. For some others of you, you are venturing into the unknown. And much like Indiana Jones, it's like you find yourself immersed in all of these chaotic adventures. And it's like, okay, well, now what do I do? I've got myself in this situation. This is also a sign to let go and to trust and to use your wits about you. Use your intelligence. Use the power of your mind to navigate the most fearful of situations. But this energy definitely brings a fearlessness, not being afraid of a lot of things that other people would be afraid of. And just moving forward with that boldness, that courageousness that is inherently within you, pile number two, which is really cool. The next card is the Three of Cups. And this is a card all about friendship. So while Will was not being truthful and honest, he still had some very powerful soulmate connections around him that were trying to help him do the right thing. And there is a character in the show named Jackie who's actually played by Tyra Banks. And she's actually an example of the friend who sits back and lets fool, or he lets Will make a fool of himself. She's not the one that tells him, you know, hey, I mean, I mean, she is the voice of reason, but she doesn't try to control what he's doing. She just points out, she speaks her mind about it, but she removes herself from the situation. And like when things get really out of hand, you kind of see her in the background going, you know, that look on her face is kind of like, I told you so, but she doesn't say that. So I'm seeing that you have some very powerful friends in your life right now People that are teaching you a lot about who you are as a person, who accept you for who you are, that don't tell you what to do necessarily, don't try to control you, but don't have a problem speaking their mind to you when they need to or feel like they, they have to, right? But these people, they are a reflection of the, the self-love and the value that you have for yourself. These are people that genuinely care about you. These are people that uplift you and encourage you and make you feel good about yourself. And you only attract these type of people into your life when you are valuing yourself, when you are confident in yourself. So if you have an amazing group of friends that has your back no matter what, but also isn't afraid to tell you when they think that, you know, obviously they don't agree with you or they're not vibing with something that you've said or they disagree. These people that aren't afraid to disagree with you but still love you unconditionally, these are people to never let go of. So if you have manifested people like this into your life, do not let them go. These are your people. These are the people who have your best interests at heart, okay? 
and you have attracted them because of the value and self-love that you have manifested within yourself and everything outside is a reflection of that self-love. What we see in the outer is a reflection of the inner, always. <laughs> With the Three of Wands in reverse, this is all about not exactly planning for the future in a strategic way. Spirit is saying that something cannot be built from a shaky foundation. So what I'm seeing from this episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is Will's lie gets really out of hand and he does not think about the consequences of this lie. And what happens is after his picture is posted in the school newspaper, the lady who took his photo actually calls this news center. They come in, they want to interview him, and they start giving him all these free gifts. They're like, look, we're giving you a year's supply of diapers for being father of the year. And they also award him a trip to Hawaii. And he's starting to feel the brunt of this because of the lie that he kept perpetuating, that he was a single father, and he, he initially did this just to gain the attraction of women. So what Spirit is saying here is to think things through, to think about the future and plan accordingly, and start building your foundation in the present moment right now, but thinking about every action that you take, building it from a firm foundation. Because if we go into something without a plan or building something on a shaky foundation already, that shaky foundation, what will it do? It will crumble. It won't thrive. So taking one step at a time with whatever it is that you're working on right now, a decision that you're wanting to make, think it through thoroughly. Because when this card is upright, it's all about forward thinking, having a vision, and then moving forward in steps. But when it's upside down, there's absolutely no strategy. There's no planning. There's no goal setting. So thinking about what it is you're creating and taking one step at a time with that, thinking things through, having a set plan, having a strategy will continue to help build the strong foundation that you are seeking in some area of your life right now, pile number two. And your last card is, life is tough, but so are you. So this was also the energy I was getting from, you know, having been hurt or disappointed in the past in childhood. And this is a message from Spirit saying, yeah, you have been through some tough things, but not only have those moments toughened you, but you're also being a beacon of light for other people, for your family, for your children, for people that you work with. Spirit wants you to know that you have no idea how many people you have inadvertently inspired just by being who you are, by being the tough version of yourself, <laughs> letting that thrive, letting that rise up within you. So if you are also in a situation right now that is tough, you are tough. Remember everything that you have overcame in the past and let those past situations fuel you. Remember the strength you had. Remember how you overcame those things. Because overcoming some of those difficult things in the past, that's no match for what you're overcoming right now, okay? You are tough, you are strong, and you are so loved unconditionally that it is radiating from your soul because of the unconditional love that you have within yourself pile number two 
So remember your strength. You are capable of achieving anything that you want. Keep your heart open. Express your feelings. Shine your light with a passion. Hold on to those people that are showing you how much they love you and value you. Set a plan for yourself. Don't build it from a shaky foundation. And sometimes when we have the choice between being right and being kind, being kind is the best thing we can do so people can learn the lessons on their own. That is all that I am seeing, pile number two. Those are your messages from the episode Father of the Year from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. If your reading resonated, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. I love you all so much, and I will see you on the next video. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Your episode from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is from season one, episode 11. So there may be messages from the angel number 111 for you. And it's called Courting Disaster. So let's see what your cards have to say from Spirit. First card is inner peace. And at the top of the card is the number 17. And it also says you are enough on this card. Angel number 17, the message that it brings is trusting that everything that you want to achieve, that you will set out to do and achieve it. Knowing that you are fully capable because you are enough and you always have been. So I'm also picking up on a lot of journaling, a lot of writing, because the gal on the card here, she's thinking about everything she wants to create in her reality and giving herself self-love in this journal. I am enough. I am manifesting this. And it's like taking breaks throughout the day to remind oneself of doing that. Coming back to inner peace no matter what. And in this episode of Courting Disaster, Carlton is already a part of the basketball team. And they actually are not very good. Will happens to stop by during one of their practices and he shoots the ball around and he just keeps making baskets left and right. So the coach wants to recruit Will and have him play on the basketball team. Well, what happens is Carlton gets very jealous and he starts to compare himself to Will. And what happened was Carlton was not seeing his own inner light. And by comparing himself to Will, he was not focusing on the things he was good at, the things that he was bringing into the world. And with the gal on the card here, I feel this represents Hillary. I feel that you, pile number three, are someone that loves to uplift people, encourage people, tell them not to compare themselves to other people because there's this one scene in particular where Carlton is very jealous after a game because Will, you know, has been the star and they won and all the glory and the light is being shined on Will. Well, Hillary sits down next to Carlton because she can feel that he is sad and she's like, what's going on? And Carlton opens up to her and tells him or tells her how he's feeling about Will being on the basketball team. And Hillary's like, you have so many amazing qualities about you, Carlton. You're the, the head of the glee club and the debate team. She, she's like, so what if Will's good at basketball? You're great at so many other things. And she points all of these wonderful things out to him. And he's like, well, thanks, Hillary. And you see that he actually has taken in that wisdom that she has shared with him in that moment. So I'm picking up on a lot of energy of helping other people 
cultivate that inner peace within themselves, uplifting people, letting people know they don't have to compare themselves to anyone because this is a place where you have learned a lot of lessons from is what I'm feeling because the card next to inner peace here is maturity. And with angel number 23, this is all about growing spiritually. So I feel a lot of mature wisdom, wise souls on this reading right now. You also have a lot of very wise people in your ancestral lineage. Some of you have very wise spirit guides who help. And she's also writing on the on this piece of paper here with this quill. So there's a lot of having journaled and figuring out who you are, what you will and will not put up with in this life. And that is truly beautiful. So because you have been growing so spiritually and maturely, there is this essence of attracting emotionally mature, emotionally safe people into your life because this is something you're cultivating from within. You're really learning how to stay in your peace pile number three and that is really really beautiful. You have a lot of wisdom that you have gained by all of this self-reflection that you have been doing and you're a very wise soul to begin with so it didn't really come too unnaturally for you. It's something that you've always naturally been able to do I see. But you have a lot of wisdom to share. You receive a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of downloads you've received through your crown chakra. Um, I'm also picking up on with the candles here. Some of you might do candle magic or teach people about the different energies that certain candles perpetuate. Some of you may be writing a book. I'm drawn to the book. Some of you may like to read a lot. Just have gained a lot of knowledge. I'm also picking up on Akashic Records. Some of you have learned a lot about your past lives and what to heal within this, this lifetime that you came to do these things. And there's also a star between the gal on the card and this spirit guide. There's a star here. So this is also a message of how divinely protected and guided you are. But also from the episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, now while there are not any spirit guides in this episode, the, the mature person that is coming through the episode is Uncle Phil. So what happens in this episode, Uncle Phil goes to the basketball game and he, you can see that he's disappointed. He's disappointed in both Will and he's disappointed in Carlton. And he expresses this after the game. So he brings this very wise information to both Carlton and Will after the game is over. In Carlton, what happened was he was so tired of Will hogging the ball that he actually stole the ball from Will and he shot the ball and he missed it. And it cost them the game in this episode. And Will and Carlton are very mad at each other. And Uncle Phil, who is Carlton's dad and Will's uncle, he comes in with this knowledge and he says, Carlton, he goes, what is going on? You stole the ball from your own teammate. And he goes, yeah, he's, just, he's a ball hog. He won't, like, pass it to anyone, give anyone else a chance. And why are you cheering for him? I'm your son and this and that. And he's very angry. And Uncle Phil says, Carlton, he goes, I go to everything that you do. He goes, everyone deserves a cheering section, even Will. This was something Will was good at, so I want to support him as much as I support you. I go to your debate meetings. I go to your glee club. I go to this. And you're not recognizing that. And you see Carlton kind of take a little step back, and he's like, oh. And... Carlton or and Will was like yeah and Will goes oh and you when you are playing on a team Will yes it's okay you know to be a star and shine your light however a real player knows how to play with a team 
They're not a one-man circus, Will. And you see Will taken aback. So Uncle Phil brings this wisdom into this, this scene with both Carlton and Will. And I feel that this is the type of wisdom that you bring to people that you are helping or people come to you for advice. And Uncle Phil is definitely representing that wisdom. So there is a lot of spiritual growth that I see taking place here, pile number three. Very, very cool. With Six of Wands, this is all about shining bright. This is about a glow up. This is about stepping into your power. This is about all eyes being on you, recognition. And it, it's also coming from a very humble place. It's not coming from that place that Will was perpetuating where, you know, he got cocky and it was all about him. No, this is a place where you have recognized every person in your life who has helped you get to where you are, but also acknowledging yourself and, you know, saying thank you to your past self for making the decisions that they made to get you to this place on your journey where you do have this success, where all eyes are on you. But it's also in this humble place of, you know, finally letting go, detaching from that outcome, not caring if all eyes are on you because you are comfortable in your own skin. You finally have put your own eyes on yourself and that is what has manifested the Six of Wands or is about to manifest, pile number three. And this definitely does represent Will's success in the episode. Not the place where he was cocky and, you know, you know, it, it's okay to be cocky, right? But like Uncle Phil said, he wasn't being a part of the team. This is understanding how all parts of your journey, all people have contributed to your growth, to your expansion, and practicing gratitude for that. I see that very, very strongly. But this success is inevitable. So if you're still in the process of growing, it's, you know, having fun with your journey. And it's all about maintaining that inner peace, no matter what. This is not about, you know, staying silent. It's about speaking up. It's about speaking your truth. And because you're bringing that authenticity, because you're bringing that authenticity through pile number three, that is what is leading to success. It is leading to people, you know, looking your way and going, well, what's going on over there? How is this person manifesting all of this? How is this person so wise? Like, where do they, what do they do to tap in that way? How do they connect to their spirit guides, their intuition? How are they so self-assured within themselves? And they, you know, they get curious and they want to know how it is that you're doing what you're doing, pile number three. And that's really, really cool. With the seven of wands, this is all about standing your ground, having boundaries, not putting up with people who want to keep you small. And in the episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Courting Disaster, when Carlton is angry at Will for shining so bright, and he's comparing himself to Will. Will actually says, he says, I am not going to make myself small in order for you to feel better about yourself. So when he said that, I thought that was very powerful. And that was him bringing through his boundaries because he loved basketball. He was passionate about it. He was not going to stop doing what he was doing because someone didn't like something he said or didn't like that he was succeeding in basketball. He refused to keep himself small for Carlton to feel good about himself. And that's what's coming through. And I feel that this is something you're learning right now, that when we play small, we will not manifest our dreams. We won't manifest the things that we have set out for ourselves, And with that number 17 card, that inner peace from within, you know, having haters, that will come with a lot of success. But what's important is to remember that 
anybody who's hating on anything you're doing, it's because they have an issue with themselves. It's because they are not happy with some aspect of themselves. And what they're seeing in you is missing in them. But haters are actually your biggest fan. I saw this from Dan Locke, who's a famous copywriter, and he has YouTube content. And he, he talks about every time he uploads a video, how there's people that jump on there and they're, they're ready to just dislike it and put a negative comment. But you have to learn to navigate that and know that that will come with the territory of being successful. But it's also, you know, this spiritual growth that you have, this inner peace that you're cultivating from within, the boundaries that you're setting for yourself. It's like, you know, all that stuff just bouncing off of you because you are solid in who you are. Never, ever play small. Do not dim your light to fit in. Keep going with what you are doing because you are making a difference. I promise you, you are. So everything that you're doing, it hasn't been for nothing. Pile number three, keep going. And anyone who tries to keep you small is not part of your tribe anyway. Your tribe are the ones that believe in you, that want to see you win. With the king of wands, I feel like every person in this episode was a king of wands in their own right. Hillary coming in with the wise advice for Carlton. Carlton, you know, being the leader of the debate club, the glee club, very strong energy there. Will being the basketball star and speaking his truth to Carlton. Uncle Phil coming in with his wisdom. There are a lot of people around you who do believe in you. Because you have believed in them. And with that light shining, you help bring this out of people. And that's why I'm drawn to everyone in this episode. Because they all have a strength. And recognizing all of our strengths and recognizing that we're all unique people, that is our superpower. I feel like you help bring those strengths out. You help people see what they're good at, even when they don't see it themselves. Because everyone in this episode shine light in some way, shape, or form. So I feel like you have learned from a lot of people on your journey, but you also have this gift of bringing out the strength of others, of helping people see how talented and amazing they are, and being very passionate about that. And moving forward with such strength and determination that nothing can stop you. I love that so much. <laughs> with the lover's card, now in this episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, there aren't any romantic relationships highlighted. So I feel that this card is pointing out family relationships and friendships, but it's upright. So that's a very positive sign. I feel like a lot of you have a lot of support around you right now that have helped you on your journey, but you're also attracting in even more support because of the growth that you've been doing, because of all the journaling and self-reflection you have done, because of the wisdom you have gained, because of the growth you have experienced. But also, the lovers can also signify attracting in mature relationships because the lovers is underneath mature. This is not settling for less in any of your relationships. If someone's not happy for you, like Carlton wasn't in this episode, I see you saying bye bye cutting the cords, not settling for less because you know your worth and you know the value you bring to this world, pile number three. So you're not settling for less than your best when it comes to relationships. 
The lovers also indicates the love you have for yourself. So the self-love that you have cultivated on your journey, you are manifesting some really cool things. I love that. With take every shot, what I'm seeing from this, or I'm sorry, this says take every chance. And what I'm seeing from the episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, all of the shots that Will takes in this episode is like swish, swish, swish. Your <laughs> energetic support team wants you to know how supported you are. So what would you do if you knew 100% within yourself that you are supported no matter what and that you can trust your path no matter what? Because if we don't take any chances, then the divine, our angels, can't bring to us opportunities to help us manifest what it is that we want. So I do feel that you have a very discerning nature. You're very wise. You pick up on energy very strongly. But also Spirit is saying that there are going to be opportunities that arise that are meant for you. And what is meant for you will never pass you by. So take every chance that fills in alignment with who you are towards that destiny. Because it's not too good to be true. It is meant for you. Okay? So like Will was taking all those shots. It's like swish, swish, swish. You are meant to succeed. Okay? So don't doubt yourself in that sense. And your last card is don't dream success. Make it happen. And in this episode... The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. There is actually a scene after one of the basketball games where Will goes to sleep and he has a dream that he's playing with this professional basketball player and he's just schooling this guy. He's dribbling around him. He's doing layups. He's taking shots. It's like the best dream that you could have, right? Spirit is saying that you have dreams like this as well, that you are visualizing what it is you want to create and with this card, it says, don't dream success, make it happen. So spirit is saying to take actionable steps towards those dreams. Now it does say don't dream success. So what I'm taking that to mean is there's a lot of visualizing, but perhaps you haven't taken action towards what it is you want to create. Or there's like this stop and go energy where you'll you'll do something and then you'll stop. You'll do something and then you'll stop. To keep the momentum going, you have to keep creating. You have to get the momentum going. And when you're doing it from a place of love and joy because you genuinely love what you're doing, that is when the universe gets to work really fast, when we're having fun. So whatever you're visualizing and dreaming about right now, start taking more action on it to make it happen. That is what is leading even more to the Six of Wands energy. Taking every chance. Manifesting in supportive, mature relationships to help you on your journey. But also recognizing the ones that you already have too. But your inner peace is a superpower strength pile number three. And... I'm hearing you have it made in the shade. It's just lighten up that shade with your light and making your dreams happen in the physical. <laughs> I love this reading so much. That was really cool. That is all that I am seeing, pile number three. Those are your messages from the episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air called Courting Disaster. If you enjoyed the reading, Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. I love you all so much, and I will see you on the next video. Bye! Hi, pile number four. Welcome to your reading. Your episode from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is from Season 2, episode 22. 
called The Aunt Who Came to Dinner. So I am also feeling there may be messages from angel number 222 for you. So definitely look into that if you feel called to do so. Let's jump into your cards and see what spirit is bringing through to you, pile number four. Your first card is compatibility, and at the top we have the number five. And angel number number five, that means that changes are coming. So you may be feeling this in your life right now with something that is transitioning in your life. Perhaps this is a new job, a new relationship, and just a lot of change coming in that feels unfamiliar to you. And with compatibility, I feel like this change is in regards to a relationship for a lot of you. It doesn't have to be, it could be a job, it could be any situation that is bringing up the topic of being compatible with your current situation or a person, feeling the vibes energetically. Because what happens in this episode of the aunt who came to dinner, Viv's sister, Aunt Viv, she shows up unexpectedly at their house because she is having issues with her husband. She thinks that he is cheating on her and she just shows up and says she's going to be staying with them for a few days. So they embrace her. They let her stay there. But then her husband actually shows up at the house and they are fighting with each other in front of everyone else and everyone's just kind of sitting there and saying oh okay I'm not quite sure what is going on so for some of you I'm also feeling an energy of needing to put up boundaries with certain people in your life who have a tendency to bring their their baggage or their their arguments into your space and it's important to speak up about this okay because this could be where you're also feeling an incompatible energy with certain people that may be living with you. I'm feeling like a living situation here where someone has intruded on your space and unexpectedly and then having opened up your, your home to these people in a loving manner, but then them coming in with like this chaotic energy of arguing and... Um, talking about their relationship very openly and kind of, you know, I feel an energy of feeling not at ease with this. So spirit is saying to make sure that you are communicating your boundaries and to speak up. And if these people genuinely love you, they will hear you out, okay? Because it's not cool, you know, to open up your home to guests only to have them run amok, and then bring their problems into, you know, your space when that wasn't what you signed up for. You know what I mean? But also, this is also changes in a relationship because I'm feeling the Aunt, or Aunt Viv's sister and her husband, they were having issues. So if some of you have been having issues, you may have been energetically picking up on the incompatibility that you may have with someone. Perhaps you're both vibing at different frequencies and that's okay, right? That, that doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship has to end. It just means that there's a lesson in that. And Spirit is saying, what is the silver lining in that lesson that's coming through right now? So in all relationships, compatibility is important, and that stems from being genuine and authentic with oneself. And when you communicate your feelings with your partner, friend, whoever this is, then it's important to 
stay stand in your truth with that to not back down to stand your ground with what it is is your truth and if the other person is in fact compatible with you they will understand they will hold space for you to be who you are now that doesn't mean that you have to be compatible in every sense of the word oh i like movies you must like movies oh i like books you must like books no they're they're should be, you know, some common ground, but you don't have to have all of the same likes. You can both like different things and still be a strong power couple is what Spirit is saying. But if you've had issues in an existing relationship, the five number, angel number coming through, is indicating that things are about to change, whether that is, you know, both of you deciding that the relationship doesn't work and you want to move in a direction with someone you're more compatible with because you have done a lot of self-reflection on that. Or it could be your current relationship strengthening because you're appreciating the differences each of you brings and also doing things with each other that you both enjoy. So like, for example, if you both like mini golf, going mini golfing, meeting on common ground because you love each other, okay? So a lot of very powerful change coming to relationships or a situation in general with understanding your energy compatibility with other people and navigating that in the best way you can, pile number four. With intimacy... The card at the or the number at the top is number 18, which that means spirit is bringing through a message of focusing on the positive aspects of your relationship. So, I'm seeing for some of you who have had issues wondering if you're compatible with your partner. The issue lies in a lack of intimacy. And when it comes to intimacy, that does not strictly mean sex. Intimacy is also bathing with one another while not engaging in the act of sex. It's holding hands. It's covering each other over with a blanket. It's buying each other flowers or gifts. It's making a nice meal for your partner. It's watching a show together. It's cuddling. So bringing more of that into your relationship would help shift some things around as well. Or perhaps, you know, even bathing with each other. Because in this episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, when Viv's sister's husband comes to the house, he tells her that the woman that she thinks he has been cheating on her with is actually his therapist. So she had a completely wrong perception about what was going on. And when she learns the truth, she feels really silly. And she's actually in the bathroom. She's taking a shower and he actually jumps into the shower with her and they make up. So the intimacy message is what Spirit is bringing through for those of you who have been questioning an existing relationship. Intimacy is important in all relationships and it's not something that all of us have been taught growing up. Some of us have to actually learn what intimacy truly is to help a healthy relationship thrive. So also learning about ways that you can be intimate with your partner, not just sexually, but in other ways, will help strengthen the relationship. So if you find that you've been focusing on all of the negative aspects of the relationship, but you know you really love this person, Spirit is saying to look back on all the positive things, to look at photos together, to spend time with each other, and to strengthen the intimacy with your partner. Okay? The next card is the Knight of Swords. And this is totally representing Will Smith's character in this episode because when I went to go read the description of this card, it says, where there's a will, there's a way. So some of you are in a situation right now where it feels like there is no way out. But where there's a will, there is a way, is what Spirit is saying. And 
what happens in this episode when um, Viv's sister and her husband start taking a shower together. Will is actually trapped in the bathroom with them when they are showering. And he had put these tissues in his ears so he couldn't hear what they were doing. But when he sees him jump into the shower, he's like, oh, hell no. And he gets up and he tries to get out of the bathroom, but he's locked in there and he can't get out. So I'm feeling an energy of feeling like you're trapped in a situation or you're locked in somewhere and you can't get out. But the message that the Knight of Swords brings is where there's a will, there's a way. So what options have you not explored? Meditation will bring very cool inspirational ideas to you. And when we focus on solutions rather than problems, then we start to see solutions in our reality. So also in the morning, when you do your morning routine, if you say, I choose to focus on solutions today and then see what comes to you naturally, organically, that is how powerful the mind is and that is how powerful you are. But also with the Knight of Swords, this is also something about words. And sometimes Will can say things that are very hurtful, and he does that a few times in this episode. So also, it's it's being very mindful of the words that we are speaking, because once they leave our mouth, then the manifestation has already started to take place, okay? So also... If you're saying things like, this is impossible, I can't do this, I am stuck here, then that is what you're creating in your reality. So being very mindful of the words that you are speaking and the thoughts that you are thinking. Getting very, very in tune with what you do want to create, not focusing on what you don't want to create, all right? With the Six of Swords... Yeah, this is where I was picking up on an energy of a transition taking place, but also feeling a little reluctant to do that. And whatever this is, it actually is for your highest good. It's moving into a new territory, which, you know, with the number five means big change. So Perhaps you didn't feel that you were a compatible fit for your current current job, or you didn't feel that you were a compatible fit for a group of people that you've been hanging out with. And it's like almost like an energy of feeling guilty for wanting to move in a new direction, but it's a very necessary move. That's what the Six of Swords is all about. It's making decisions based for your highest good, not for anyone else's. Because ultimately, when it comes to compatibility energy, it's important that, you know, you're solid in knowing who you are and making decisions based off of that, not what you think other people want for you, what you want for yourself. So this is a situation where you are doing something that is for your highest good. And what I feel very strongly was that energy of people overstepping their boundaries here, needing to communicate, um, people trying to bring you into their problems and doing it unexpectedly, not giving you a heads up, just like Viv's sister does in this episode of Fresh Prince where she just shows up because she knows her sister will you know, help her out, but also Viv and Uncle Phil and Will, when they're all sitting at the dinner table and they can hear what everyone is saying when they're fighting, her sister and her husband, they're, like, he actually says something along the lines while they're sitting at the dinner table eating about, oh, you remember that time you were on the toilet? And everyone just, like, kind of looks up, like, okay, we're eating here. <laughs> so this transition could also mean, you know, evolving into that, that version of yourself who speaks out about these things, who sets boundaries, saying this is not okay. And, you know, moving into more compatible energy in that way is what the six of swords is so whatever this transition is it is for your highest good pile number four and it's important to trust that with the eight of swords 
in reverse. This is all about something having taken place in the past. And it's interesting because we also have this card, don't regret the past, learn from it. So what I see very strongly is having been betrayed in a past relationship because Aunt Viv's sister, she thinks her husband has cheated on her. And it turns out he actually had it. But for some of you, I'm seeing that that was the case, that somebody really hurt you. And there's a fear that, you know, moving into this new territory, moving into a new relationship, fear that it's not going to work out, fear that this person is going to betray you, cheat on you because of the person in the past is. And what Spirit is saying is don't regret what happened in the past, learn from it. So also, like if, you know, there were red flags in a past relationship and it was a situation where you weren't in a place consciously where you recognize that, give yourself grace. That was a learning experience. You know now what you didn't know then. So learning from that is what is going to help get you out of that energy of ruminating in the past, okay? And whoever this person, I feel like there's a new person that has come in, or it could be that you have been questioning your current relationship because of these fears from the past. And Spirit wants you to know that the person that hurt you in the past is not the person that you're with now. It's completely different. You manifested this person in because you walked away from that person in the past, okay? So you are in the process of learning how to learn from your past, okay? It has served you in learning very powerful lessons. With the Four of Pentacles in reverse, I feel like there was also something that happened in the past in regards to money and somebody stealing a lot of money or having done a bad deal with someone and it's all about you know wanting to be compatible with business partners or friends or co-workers and what same message whatever happened in the past with whoever you know betrayed you in terms of a, a business deal a money deal that's not going to happen again because you're learning from it you're taking what you learned from these negative experiences in the past and you're fueling that into your present moment right now saying, I know now what I didn't know then. So there is beautiful opportunities that are taking place in your life right now that are being offered up to you with a lot of change, a lot of moving forward, moving out of a stuck energy, knowing where there's a will, there's a way, having more intimacy with your partner, focusing on the positive aspects of the relationship, not being fearful of money situations or ha being fearful of being betrayed again. Now, those are valid fears to have, okay? And that emotion is valid. But what I'm seeing is that you don't have to worry about that ever again. And when you take the perspective that it was a learning experience and not being hard on yourself for not seeing the red flags to begin with. It's forgiving yourself for that, okay? And learning from it. Because with the ending card here, just do it. This is spirit saying, this is safe to move forward with. Whatever you're being presented with now, just do it. This is for your highest good. And this was right underneath the Six of Swords, which is that transition. So if you're questioning being in a relationship with somebody, yes, there is compatibility here. If you're thinking about doing a business dealing, yes, there is compatibility here. If you're thinking about anything new, a new venture of some sort, the compatibility is there. This is for your highest good. Don't doubt it. And whatever happened in the past, that's not going to happen again because you are learning from it, pile number four. Very powerful reading here. I love it. 
that is all that I am seeing, pile number four. Those are your messages from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air episode called The Aunt Who Came to Dinner. If your reading resonated, if you enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. I love you all so much, and I will see you on the next video. Bye!